Hello and welcome to another Tales from the Front video where we do walkthroughs of actual solutions uh, for, that users needed in the Power BI community. If you are not already active there, definitely encourage that. It's a great place to get help if you need it, uh, to learn from other people, to see how they solve uh, common problems, um, sharpen your own skills, and once you get a little more experience, help others out and help them pick up the stuff that, that you've learned. Um, if you like these videos, here's my uh, con contact info, so I encourage you to follow me on Twitter, uh, or even better, subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel so you can be notified as new videos come out. Um, so in this one today, we're going to uh, do something that I have seen a few times on the community, and in general, it's just a good practice to, to make these um, index columns in your date table. Uh, to just help you out and so in this uh, video we'll make uh, several of them basically uh, in this case the user wanted them to be centered on today so instead of just a generic index starting from the beginning um, basically the current day the current week the current quarter and month and year would be zero and then it would go up and down uh, from there um, so this is one is a, is a dax topic but this certainly could be done on the m uh, query side as well uh, but i think it's a little easier in dax and this is a pretty basic one. So let's just talk about the um, scenario. I kind of described it. We want the you know current time period uh, that we're in, whether it's week, month, quarter, year, um, to be centered on zero, and then it go counts up and down from there, um, negative for the past, positive for the future. Um, and just having these index columns, not really going to demo it today, but there's a bunch of uses for them. Um, if nothing else, it's good for helping you sort your other columns, like your year month or, or quarter columns. Um, you know, certainly nowadays they have the relative filters on the filter panel, so those are really useful uh, as well. But this gives you another way to do relative filters. So if you like filter to zero for the quarter, it'll always show you the current quarter um, even after it refreshes. Um, and so that's it's another way to get relative filters um, and certainly encourage you to learn how to use time intelligence but these also give you a way to quickly jump around in time periods by using these columns in your uh, DAX expressions to you know jump back a certain number of weeks or quarters or whatever and compare different uh, time periods for your measures um, certainly I hope everyone knows uh, it's best practice not to have a auto generated date table so you know look in your settings and make sure uh, that you have this box unchecked, auto uh, um, date time. Um, if you open an older file since be before you uncheck that box, you can you you would need to also change it in this the current file settings on data load. Uh, just uncheck the same box. Um, all right, so let's talk about uh, how to make these columns. This should be a pretty short video, uh, so I'll just jump over to data view and we'll talk in this date two and then i'll show you sort of it all put together in this this date um, one so basically this date two is just a a typical uh, dax uh, calculated table and in this case uh, we're using the add columns around the calendar function to generate um, just these typical kind of columns year year month month and year quarter um, so these these first columns here that we're showing um, over a fixed date range. Of course, this can be dynamic. You can use min max against your fact table as well to dynamically set these up, which is, I definitely encourage you to do that. But for this demo, I just hard coded them in for 2020 and 2021. Okay. And so then from here, um, each of these index columns is added uh, as calculated columns, but I'll show you in a second how you could just update that add columns calendar formula to also include these um, as well. And so the, the pattern is similar, you know, basically on each of these, you're going to say, you know, what's the, the current value for the today time period that I'm in, whether it's day, week, month, quarter, year. Um, and then what is the value for the current row that I'm on? So in each of these ones I'm going to show you, you'll be using the value from what's on the, the date table, uh, the date column. And so that's this reference here, the date. And so with the day one, it's real simple. Basically, it's just using the date diff function to compare today to whatever the value is on this row. Um, since we're doing the uh, today first, any date in the past would come up as a negative number. And in the date diff function, you can set the time interval you want to measure. And in this case, we're using day. And so um, because it's late November, you know, we're 
you know, 332 days into 2020, and uh, you know, we get uh, negative 332 for the day index. So this one's this one's real simple. Um, the week index is a little more involved, but it's basically the same pattern. So basically, what we're used doing here is two variables. So in the first variable, you know, today start of the week. So we're taking today. Uh, so if this refreshes daily, this would get updated every day. And basically, this is a common trick to do is is subtract from today the use of the weekday function of today. So what day of the week is it? One to seven. Um, uh, also of today, and then add one back to it. And this would basically give you the Sunday of the current week. And then you can do the same approach for the value on this row, where you would do, again, take that date, subtract the day of the week, um, add one to it, and you would get the Sunday for whatever this row is. And then again, we do the date diff function to compare those two variables. And this would return days, and then we just divide by seven, which gives us the number of weeks. So we get a week index, again, that goes uh, from from that, the this current week would be zero, um, and then um, it would be positive uh, for future weeks. Okay. Um, similar thing for the month. Again, you in this case we're figuring out the end of month using that function for today. Uh, end of month is a really useful function to kind of do old school uh, date stuff. Um, and in this case, we're not shifting the month; we're just giving it a zero. So we're just saying whatever. Uh, today is go to the end of the month same approach here whatever the date, the date value is in this row go to the end of its month uh, also zero there and then again do the date diff um, but in this case uh, use the month parameter uh, as the third clause in date diff instead of day and you'll get the number of months in that index okay um, similar kind of thing with quarter a little bit more formula there uh, where you take the uh, you have to, because we have multiple years in our data here, so we need to um, do the year, get the, the year of it, multiply by four, because there's four quarters in a year, plus uh, however far into the year we, add, we are, we add the number of quarters um, into, into the year. Same thing for the value on this row, and then um, these are just integer numbers of quarters, and then we just, again, subtract this as well doing um, the today quarter first uh, minus that and we get our our quarter index as well sorry we do the this index this row minus the today quarter so that we get negative for past and positive for future and then the year one is very simple again we just use the year function for today the year function for the value in this row subtract the two and we get our our year index as well right so if we go to, for example, the day index here, and we will go to where is zero, you can see that all four of these are, all five of these are centered uh, for the, the current period, right? And obviously um, there's more, there's a year's worth of zeros for this one, a quarter worth of zeros a uh, month and, and a week. Um, and so, okay, so that's just a run through of how to do those columns individually. Um, once you have those expressions, of course, you can do add them to your expression. So this is just the, the date table um, with all those things already added in so that this could be just copy and pasted into a new model. Um, definitely a practice I recommend is to have what I call uh, a starter file where you have a blank um, PBIX file with a date table already in there um, and you've got all your columns sorted and you've got a measure table created, um, maybe some theme changes, uh, visuals you like already set up in there so that it saves you time every time you make, it, make a new model because you've already got your, your date table already set up and sorted. Uh, and so it can save you, you know, 15 minutes on every PBIX that you make. And of course, you can always adjust these to reference whatever, um, whether you can hard code them or, or make them uh, dynamic based off of the date columns in your fact tables, for example. Okay. All right. So hopefully uh, that trick was, was useful for you. Um, just a few ta key takeaway points. Um, again, definitely encourage everyone, if you have date columns in your data, you're going to be doing a kind of date uh, analysis there, definitely have a date table and turn off auto date time. 
and you know adding these columns I, I find them to be really useful um, again for sorting for use in measures where you can really get surgical with you know adding subtracting weeks and, and that kind of stuff uh, another tool for the toolbox in addition to all the great stuff you can do with time intelligence functions um, and another way to do sort of relative time filters where you can use these columns to to always um, so the users always start out on the, the current time period uh, for example instead of having to to select that from a from a slicer okay all right so again hopefully you enjoy these videos and please subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified when more of them come out